I was thinking about how not only is it winter right now, but even over the last year, we've spent more time than ever inside of our homes. So today I thought that we can talk about um, ways that we can reduce the toxicity in our home. So I'm going to share with you guys eight ways that I found to start transitioning my, in my journey to create a healthier home. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I am a certified holistic nutritionist. If you like what this video brings you, then please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and be sure that you hit that like button. By doing this, that will really help support me and help my channel get bumped up in the YouTube algorithm. I'm super excited because I'm almost at 200 subscribers. So please help me beat that milestone. And just before we get started, I will have some products that I love myself and use, and I'll have those listed down in the description below. So if you decide um, to use any of those links, I will earn a small commission from that, which is really awesome. I really, truly appreciate all of your guys' support. So the first tip that I have for how to create a healthier home is to ditch those cleaning products, or better yet, DIY your household cleaning products. So our cleaning products have so many chemicals that are super hazardous to our health. For instance, toilet bowl cleaner. Toilet bowl cleaner contains chemicals that have harmful fumes for breathing and can be irritating to the eyes. And if they mix with other um, household substances, then they can create poisonous gases. So not to mention if you get them on your skin, it can cause severe irritation or chemical burns. And I really like making my own products. Um, not only are they generally way cheaper, but they're usually pretty safe to even ingest um, in most cases. Not saying that you should do that. Please don't do that. But you can make your own toilet bowl cleaner with a little bit of baking soda, some Castile soap, and a few drops of essential oil. And then you can rinse it out with a little bit of vinegar. So if you let it set for a minute, then you can go ahead and scrub it out. Pretty easy or if you're short on time, or if you have a camper and you like to go camping in the summertime, an easy way is just, just use a store-bought natural cleaner. So another one is all-purpose cleaner. So for most things, I just prefer to use soap and water. However, if it's a tougher job, I like to add a little bit of baking soda, and that pretty much takes care of whatever I need. You can use a little bit of cell suds um, and baking soda and just scrub things. For floors, I often just use my steam mop for a quick mopping, I love my steam mop, which I just add water to. It takes just a few seconds to heat up and bam, done. Every once in a while, I don't mind cleaning smaller floors on my hands and knees. And for that, I just like to use a vinegar mixed with water. I often use a store-bought cleaner like Aunt Fanny's and you just mix it in your water and you're good to go. For glass, my favorite cleaner is the seventh generation free and clear cleaner but I know that some people even just use a vinegar water solution. And I shared in a previous video about a mixture that I use for um, special services, like I have a marble shower and that takes special cleaners. So if you want to go check that out, I'll go post, post that up here and then you can go back and check on that. But that's it for regular cleaners. My tip number two is to refresh your cookware. And we've all heard by now that Teflon cookware is bad. But what about aluminum or ceramic coated pans or copper cookware? Now first, aluminum cookware is usually generally cheaper and it's strong and lightweight. But it's also usually coated. And if that coating chips, which it's prone to do, it really can be hazardous to our health. With a chipped coating, it exposes us to elevated aluminum exposure, which has been linked to central nervous diseases like Alzheimer's or ALS. And after all, aluminum is a neurotoxic metal. And we really don't want that leaching into our food. So another one is copper cookware. So even though our bodies need copper, if we get too much copper, we can get heavy metal poisoning. And copper is more likely to leach into our food if you're cooking in an acidic food. Now, copper is often coated, but it's often coated in nickel, which is another toxic element. All right, now another one is ceramic coated pots and pans. Now, this one can be somewhat debatable because ceramic is generally safe, but it can chip. And sometimes beneath the ceramic can be lead and cadmium, which can lead to lead poisoning. 
and two with ceramic it can just be coating an aluminum pan now this is where you're gonna have to do your research because some ceramic cookware is totally safe but make sure that you're choosing a higher quality 100% ceramic cookware or choose a good quality ceramic coated cast iron now don't forget to do your research on that now last is the Teflon nonstick pans this is going to be the worst one on the list, but it's also probably the most common household pan on the highly toxic offender list. Teflon pans have a chemical compound called PFOAs, which have been linked to several cancers like breast, ovarian, and prostate cancers. And though some believe that the exposure to small quantities are safe, other household products can also contain Teflon, so it's probably best that we try to avoid it as much as possible. So here's a big one with nonstick pans. Now, they're usually coated with plastic, and that plastic is called PTFE. So when it gets heated to about 572 degrees, it can leach some of those nasty toxins. And that's not just in our food, but also in the air. Now, this one, I always knew that nonstick pans were technically bad, but it never really sunk in until about a year ago when I had a tote of newly hatched spring chicks in a tote in our back room. Now, they were healthy and chirping until a few minutes into cooking dinner. Now the pan that I was using, it wasn't even new and it was well used and washed hundreds of times. But to make a long story short, it was a really sad evening because our chicks died and it was all my fault. So if nonstick pans can kill a bird, what in the world is it doing to us? So just do yourself a favor, replace some of your cookware with better, safer options. And some safer options, of course, can be stainless cookware, which is what I switched to, but also you can use glass or cast iron. Now, my tip number three is to get fresh air and ditch those fragrances. So first, if you have the ability to open a window for fresh air, then do it. But if you're in the dead of winter and freezing temps like it is here right now, that may not be an option. So I'm not gonna lie, I've used those plug-in air fresheners, I've burned those cheap, heavily fragrance candles, and I've worn perfumes. We've all done it at some point, I'm sure. But now that I've had minimal fragrance fragrances or scents in my home for the last few years, when there is a strong fragrance that comes through, it gives me an instant headache, or it makes me get mucusy and cough, or it makes my nose burn. It is because that the chemicals that are used to make fragrances are classified as allergens, hormone disruptors, asthma triggers, neurotoxins, and carcinogens. Now, some better options is using essential oils in a diffuser. You just add a few drops of essential oil to the water and boom, done. Now, that's a natural air freshener. There are other reasons to do this too, but we'll save that for a future video. Now, if you like burning candles, find a beeswax or a coconut wax candle, which burn cleaner and make sure that it has essential oils and a braided cotton wick. Now, some of the old candles that we had when I was a kid had lead in the wick. So make sure that you get rid of any candles that may have lead. Now, if you guys have any stories to share on this, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Now, tip number four, remove your shoes. Now, this one is a number one rule in our house. And I couldn't imagine what our house would look like if we allowed all the kids to run around with their shoes on because it's seriously bad enough with two dogs. It's not just the mess as to why we make our kids remove their shoes at the door. Now, back before we had kids, or even before I was married for that matter, I was going to school to be a nurse. You know how many germs are on the bottoms of shoes? The soles of your shoes not only hold chemicals from every floor that they've walked on, but the amount of bacteria or harmful substances cling right to those shoes and then deposit on your carpet. So now just think about wearing your shoes in a public restroom, then think about your shoes being on your carpet for your baby to be crawling through. It's a super easy habit to change and it's a super beneficial one. Now tip number five. Use microfiber rags to clean with. Now first, paper towel definitely has its place. For instance, I prefer to use paper towel when cleaning my toilet. I know it's a mental thing for me and I just can't bring myself to reuse the rag that I wiped the toilet with, but I promise I'm working on that. But anyways, some paper towels contain chemicals for one, but they're also wasteful. 
So let's think about some facts of microfiber. So first, microfiber rags are great because they contain roughly 200,000 fibers per inch, which makes them more absorbent. And that also means that they can hold up to seven times their weight. That's a pretty cool fact. But with that, they can also hold more dust, which makes cleaning easier. Now, they're also hyperallergenic, which means that they're great for those allergy and asthma sufferers. They're eco-friendly, which means when you're done with them that you can just throw them in the wash. Now, a fifth one is they are lint-free, so they won't leave behind any fibers and they won't scratch your surfaces. A sixth one is because the microfiber is so good at cleaning with all of those little fibers, they can remove around 98.9% .9 of bacteria from smooth surfaces with just cleaning with water, which is 6% more than using a traditional cotton rag with Lysol or bleach. That's crazy, right? All right, and now number six. My next tip is a pretty well-known one too, and that is dry cleaning. We all know that dry cleaning involves chemicals and that's bad, but studies on the chemical known as PERC, which is P-E-R-C, has been um, studied since the early 1970s and it's the most dangerous for the workers in those dry cleaning facilities. And I'll quote this, it says, the American Cancer Society describes epidemiological studies in humans that show workers regularly exposed to PERC have increased rates of lymphomas, and esophagus, kidney, cervix, and bladder cancers. Just whoa for a second. <laughs> and then I'll quote this. It says, today it's a known neurotoxin in the US Occupational Safety and Human Safety Agency, or known as OSHA, links acute exposure to PERC. It's linked to dizziness, blurred vision, and loss of coordination. Something as mild as picking up a PERC cleaned garment that wasn't properly dried can temporarily trigger these symptoms. Long-term exposure can even trigger mild memory loss. So I'll make sure to link those in uh, those articles down in the description below so you guys can read them if you want. But seriously, this is one reason why I personally won't buy garments that require dry cleaning. So when I'm shopping, I just look for what material it is and what the care instructions are. And if I can't get it washed in my washing machine, I just don't buy it. Now, there are some things like men's dress suits that are super hard to find um, that are in a washable fabric, but honestly, all nice looking suits are dry clean only. So here's a little tip. So since the chemicals basically can evaporate to a degree off of the clothes over time, um, you can just leave them hanging in your garage for a few days or a week until they don't smell anymore. Just let them air out before bringing them into your house. So the longer they can have to air out, outside the better so i'll share some resources on that again down in the description below so tip number seven ditch the plastic so first let's talk about the cheap plastic shower curtain liners you know how when you get the first or when you first bring home that shower curtain liner it smells really strong of plastic that's the VOCs that you're breathing in. So VOCs can cause respiratory irritation and they can damage the central nervous system, liver, kidneys. They can um, make you have symptoms like nausea, headaches, and lack of coordination. But the most common symptoms that happen with the exposure to the VOCs um, are eye irritation, headache, the nausea, vomiting, fatigue, dizziness, or nosebleeds. So if you have to use a plastic shower liner, again, just like the dry cleaning, just let it, you know, open it up, let it air out in your garage for a few days until it doesn't really, it doesn't smell anymore. And then go ahead and hang it if you have to. But some better alternatives would be um, like the fabric shower curtain liners, or if you have to do the plastic ones, just make sure they're PVC free. Now with that, with plastics, many food and drink containers now are made of plastic and they can contain a chemical that we commonly know as BPA. So the FDA says that BPA in small doses is safe for um, our food, and that's your decision if you want to agree with that or not. Um, but we know that the exposure to BPA is a concern because of the possible health effects of the BPA on the brain and the prostate glands of fetuses, infants, and children. So there's also a link to BPA um, for children's behavioral issues and high blood pressure. 
So we know that BPA can leach into our food when the material gets warmed up, um, like heating up leftovers in your microwave or if you have a plastic water bottle and you're working outside in your garden in the summertime, it heats up in the sun. Those are all ways that the BPA can leach into your food and drink. So some better alternatives are to use glass, stainless steel, or even porcelain. So here on our little homestead, we find ourselves drinking a lot of water and we just drink out of canning jars because when we're done um, emptying a jar and we wash them out, they tend to sit on our counter for a few days before we take them down and put them away. So we just drink out of those and it makes it so we don't have to refill our glass so often because it holds more water. So I did end up buying lids and stainless straws for the jars. So that way it can reduce, it'll help reduce the mess and spills if there's any at the table with, especially for the kids, because they just use the pint jars. And then food storage, we use, we just use the glass food storage containers. Now my last tip and my favorite one by far. So my eighth tip is make your own laundry powder and softener. So ditch the dryer sheets, guys, because I'll tell you why. So I've been making my own laundry soap for about 15 years now, and, and that's how I became interested in soap making, which led me to create my own soap company. So I started making my own laundry soap because my oldest son was sensitive to the chemicals in store-bought laundry soap, and his little baby skin would break out in rashes. So I started with a liquid version, but as the years went on, I just realized that throwing the powders together was just so much easier. It worked just as good. So I throw my powders together and I make a five gallon bucket at a time, which lasts our bigger family most of a year. And when I did the calculations on how I make my laundry powder, it's not only way healthier than store-bought commercial liquid soap, but it literally saves our family a couple hundred dollars a year. So I'll have to put a video together on that soon of how I make that. Um, or if that's something that you guys would be interested, you know, make sure you leave a comment below and let me know. Um, so now the fabric softener. I just use vinegar. I put vinegar in the little softener dispenser in my washing machine, and that not only makes my clothes soft, but it doesn't have a strong odor either. I used to use the dryer balls in the past, and I definitely love those, um, more so for the days when I used to use cloth diapers. But as we got out of that stage, the dryer balls just tended to end up in a pant leg in somebody's bedroom and I could never find them. So vinegar for us is just a way better option. And two, vinegar is cheap. I mean, I just go down to our local warehouse store and I buy it by the gallon. So that saves a ton of money and I love being frugal. So I mean, super cheap tip for you. So with that, that helps keep the chemicals out of our clothes and it helps keep our clothes soft. And I just pour it right into the dispenser options for both the powder and the vinegar, um, and it works good. And one thing too that I love about my own homemade powder is the fact that it works just as good, if not better, than the stuff that I was buying from the store. So it's cheap, it's easy to do, and it works better. My husband is a general contractor and we have a little farm and we get so dirty in the summertime and it cleans our clothes so good. We are super happy with it. So with that, that is the end of my eight tips of creating a healthier home. And thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. So if you like this video, please make sure you smash that like button and show your support. My goal is to do a weekly video, so I will see you next week. 